Hey guys, so today I decided to take on a little bathroom project makeover situation. <laughs> this is my kids bathroom. It is original to our home, which was built around the mid 2000s, around 2006 ish. Okay, so um, yeah, everything in here is pretty much original besides the pink paint color i think this was the previous owner um i can tell by i could tell by the different colors throughout the house uh there i lost track how many colors were in the house but there was a lot so this is like a pink peach color and as you guys could see i cleaned the walls using a clean mop head with the spray mop just to clean the walls off and i also scrubbed the tub and um, yeah, I plan on refinishing the tub with a tub tile kit. So to prep the tub, you have to clean it really, really good. Take off anything that is stuck to the tub, stickers, things like that. This was on here when we bought the tub, well, the, bought the tub, bought the house. So I'm taking this off finally. I believe this used to hold the shower head, okay? So I got that off, scraped off all that gunk. Also took off the old vent grate, and um, you guys are going to see I'm going to update that. So I cleaned the tub twice, scrubbed it twice. You can see how shiny it is from the glare from the um, LED light. I have a work light that I use for projects. So yeah, I scrubbed it twice, but I actually scrubbed it again after painting. And the reason why I'm painting before refinishing the tub is because I want to reduce the... Um, the chances of paint falling onto a newly refinished tub. Okay, so I covered the entire tub with plastic. This is a uh, plastic that you could get in the paint section at your local hardware store. Okay, or you can go to Wally World. But um, yeah, and this is also to keep paint out of the tub so I don't have to scrub this off again. Okay. So I'm taping this down completely on the tub shower surround using painter's tape and a plastic drop cloth or plastic, you know, paint protection plastic, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I did the entire tub surround, okay? And I try to keep my lines very straight so only the walls were visible. Okay, I did not tape onto the actual wall, just the tub tower, the tub shower surround. All right, to start and prime, I'm going to be using the Sincer. I mess this up all the time. Sincer, Sincer <laughs> primer. It is a no sand primer. Really, really awesome stuff. Okay, I'm going to use this and first cut my edges, you know, cut my corners and just use a hand brush. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my paint roll and roll the walls. You just want a nice thin layer of this on the wall. The reason why I primed the wall is because um, I really, really dislike this pink peach color. It had to go. So I wanted to make sure none of it was visible through the new beautiful gray shade that I painted the bathroom. I also used this primer to prime the ceiling. Okay. Um, I wanted to repaint the ceiling. It just had a very dingy white look to it. I also took off the towel holder and fixed any holes that were on the walls or any, you know, nail marks. And you see here, the towel holder left like huge holes. So I removed that, you know, primed the ceiling. And um, make sure when you clean your tub, you clean your tub like you've never cleaned it before, okay? You're going to see why later. It's very important to make sure your tub is clean, okay? And we're going to clean it again just to make sure. But use something abrasive. The box that, um, the kit that I'm using is going to tell you exactly what to use. But I used my own type of stuff, you know, something very harsh just to get everything off, okay? Just want to let you know that right now. I'm also taking off this old vanity light, which was original to the bathroom. It was hideous. It had to go. Okay, it was rusty, it was broken, and just not cute. And it wasn't even, like, level on the wall. It was a kind of a weird angle. So it just looked tacky altogether. 
All right, so the color I am using is called Agreeable Gray. Again, the color is called Agreeable Gray, because I know someone's going to ask me in the comment section, so I really hope you're listening. I'm not going to reply to every comment asking me what color gray that is. <laughs> okay, so I hope you're listening. Okay, so I'm going to just take my brush and cut my corners first and then roll. Don't worry about the paint that is around the... Um, the shower, what do you call that? Fascia, not fascia. That thing that goes on the wall. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I actually bought a new one. Flange, I think it's called. Um, so that one was rusted. So I didn't really care about paint getting onto it. All right. So once you cut your corners, it just makes it much easier for you to paint. It also saves on paint, okay? Because sometimes if you use a roll and you're trying to rush and you just want to roll the walls out without cutting the corners first, what happens is sometimes your roll can hit the other wall and then it takes paint off and then you have to go all crazy and start all over again, okay? So here we are with the paint. And the color again is called Agreeable Gray. It's a Sherwin Williams color, and I had it made in a different brand of paint. Okay. Um, last time I went to my hardware store, uh, one of the employees there gave me a hard time for some reason. But I've been having this done for months, years now, and never had an issue with it. I just think that guy had a bad day, or just didn't like me in there. I don't know. But anyways, you can have the color in. Um, most paint formulas if if your budget is bigger you can have it in a very very fancy paint if it's not that big you can get it in a cheaper quality paint if you like all right I used the uh, Valspar 2000 paint and primer so I also got this new tone brawn um, upgrade vent cover with LED light which is super easy to install you just plug it in to the um, current vent fan plug that's there and then you plug the vent fan into it so it's super easy then here I'm gonna tell you something this drain took me five hours of my life to get out you guys okay then I discovered that the person who installed it used caulk under the drain instead of plumber's putty they use caulk to put the drain in so that's why it took so long for me to get it out I must say I felt really accomplished after this so what I used was a hammer and a needle nose plier to remove the drain. I may do a separate video to show you guys exactly how I did that, okay, without um, a drain tool. And I'm sure some guy is going to say, well, you could have used the drain tool. Well, the T cross thing that's usually in the drain was corroded and gone, so that was not an option that I could do. I also paint all the trim, primed with the sensor, sensor primer, and then went in with my Alkid. I guess that's how I'm going to say it, bare <laughs> paint um, in bright white. And it is a satin gloss type finish, so very easy to clean. So basically the bathroom is gray and white, white trim and white doors. I went ahead and took off this peeling veneer plastic that was on the vanity. I took that off, primed it again with the same product. Um, and just gave it two coats of primer just because this is MDF and it looked very porous and I just wanted to make sure it had a good coat of primer on here because I didn't want it to get damaged by water. This primer creates a very durable mold resistant film over surfaces and if you have a project that you have to sand you can use the primer on it because it pretty much sticks to anything. It took forever just to get it off my skin um, when I got some of it on me. Okay, Sorry about that you guys. You're going to hear some of my kids in the background. I, I'm pretty sure we're all at home. You know, my children are at home. I work from home and I'm a stay at home mom so... Eh, it pretty much feels like summertime, but instead we have school, um, online school, which is interesting. All right, so two coats of this primer, which you can find in Wally World. It's very affordable, very durable, and does a great job. So once I get my primer on, you want this to dry for about one hour before you start painting. Okay, and the paint I'm using is a sample size. I didn't want to spend too much money on a bigger container of paint. It's a sample size um, container 
of Valspar paint in a satin finish. The color is called Ocean Storm, I believe it is. I might be wrong. Let me just double check real quick what it's called. Hold on. It's called Ocean Storm, correct. So it's a beautiful gray shade and not too cool. has more of a warm tone to me, maybe more neutral. It's very, very pretty. And as you guys could see, I used the brush to get into the molding first. Okay, you want to get that first and then you paint the rest. So if you take your time and paint, that one sample should do a normal size vanity, okay? So now that I've painted the walls to my liking, trims painted, um, primed and painted, I used that same primer over everything, everything. I'm going to go ahead and take off the plastic and I'm using a box cutter to help cut through the... Um, not the tape, but the edge of the tape, so that when I take the tape off, it doesn't peel paint off the wall, okay? And then now I'm going to go in and fix a little, a tiny little crack that was in here using the JW um, epoxy kit, which I also got from Wally World. To put in the new drain, you're going to need plumber's putty, okay? You may need to replace the rubber ring that is between the tub and the base, the ground, I guess under the tub but mine didn't need to be replaced so I just left it and used the plumber's putty to put around the top part of the drain and then you screw it in whatever is too much will squeeze out once you screw down your drain try to make sure you have your drain lined up properly so you don't you know mess up the threads in it okay and as you can see, I'm using a needle nose plier to screw the drain back into place and rubbing off the excess plumber's putty. I really like this drain. I wanted to replace it and get the same exact one, but it was all sold out. So I had to go and just stick with like a traditional nozzle pull, pulley one. I don't know what you call it. So I went ahead and took off the tub spout to clean off any, you know, gunk that was around it, behind it. Also took off um, where the handle is, the, the cover, and all of that. And there was a lot of nasty stuff built up there from years. Um, I don't think this was ever taken off from since it was installed. And yes, I used toilet cleaner. I bought this toilet cleaner just to clean the tub tower, the tub shower surround um, because it has hydrogen chloride in it and it pretty much eats away at soap scum and built up and it cleans the tub really nicely the only thing about it is it messes up chrome it tarnished the chrome and I discovered that because I assumed my water tarnished the drain which I had to replace it tarnish the drain the new drain so I had to replace it with another one okay so yes you can use this to clean your tub and prep it for this kit that I will be using but try not to get it on anything that is chrome because it will damage it okay so I'm using the JW epoxy steel epoxy um, kit to fill in the deep chips that are in the bottom part of the tub and this is a fiber fiberglass tub shower surround by the way all these tools, these little plastic tools, you can get in the dollar section in most um, dollar stores or Wally World. They also have a little dollar section there, okay? You don't have to spend a whole lot to get, you know, some okay tools. I'm not going to say they're professional, but they're okay, okay? And get you some sandpaper. You need sandpaper because you're going to need to sand this to make it smooth again. Try your best to get it into the chips okay as good as you can get it smooth it over it, even if it has a little bit on top that's fine you're gonna sand it to smooth it out to make it perfect I know it does look dark yes it looks dark but that's why we're refinishing the tub because the tub is not gonna be this off-white biscuit ivory color anymore okay and this product requires four to six hours to dry. I just let it dry overnight just to be on the safe side. I sanded it dry and then I went in with uh, water and sanded it wet. And then now I'm going back in with the toilet cleaner and this is where I messed up by using the toilet cleaner while my chrome was on and it messed up the new drain. And as you guys could see on my scrubber, I had a round sandpaper attached to it, and this kind of did double duty. It cleaned and sand the tub 
shower surround as I was cleaning it and getting it ready to refinish it. A lot of the parts that I'm removing from the tub I really wanted to replace but some of them are just really hard to find just in stores so they will have to be ordered online. I did buy replacements they just didn't work. Okay before you do you mix your tub shot your tub kit Please make sure that your shower tub surround is completely dry and free of dust. Get yourself some um, tack cloth. Um, this will help get the dust off. Get yourself a vacuum, something. Just get all the dust off, okay? When you mix this product, this is the Rust-Oleum Tub and Tile Kit. When you mix this product, please take your time and mix it. I mixed this before I started taping off my tub tower surround just to let it sit for a tiny bit. It does have a very strong odor. Okay, so I suggest wearing a mask when using this product. Also, get a fan and turn it the opposite way so it sucks air from out your bathroom, especially if it does, especially if it's not a bathroom with windows, and have the vent on. Okay, um, here's another thing: it require it, the kit requires that you use um, high density foam rollers, which are awesome. Yes, but you're going to need a lot of these one to two rollers is not going to do it this product is an epoxy acrylic formula and it eats away at the foam rollers for the first coat i actually used about i think it was five to seven rollers the first coat okay you guys first coat okay also i suggest it, yes you can use some small ones to get into like you know the little spaces between the the tub spout and the drain and the handle and all of that but i suggest getting a wider roller i ended up going to home depot and getting wider rollers which were much better oh my gosh much better i got the second and third coat done in half the time that it took the first coat okay um, again go in with your box cutter to cut the tape well you know score just a little bit so you could take it off as clean as you can the left side I kind of missed it there so I ended up peeling off just a tiny bit of paint but I repainted reprimed and repainted that area okay so this is how the tub looks from the old ivory bisque biscuit color or whatever that was to nice and bright and white so for the floors, I am going to clean off as much paint as I can. Anything that is bulgy and thick, I'm just going to scrape off. I tried using this tool that I got from the DG store, but it's dangerous and it doesn't work. So don't buy that. It was $3, waste of money. Okay, so get all the dust off the floor. If you have to, you know, use a product that will get any oils or grease off the floor. I use acetone. Um, I actually use this for acrylic nails and stuff like that or nail polish and wipe the entire floor with it And then for my tile, I'm using a peel and stick tile that I got from Home Depot It's $24 a box and it covers 20 square foot per box. I bought two boxes. The bathroom is about 30 square foot I also brought this product called stick and stay and I'm using a um, adhesive I'll call it a spatula um, to spread this product out. You just want a nice thin layer of this product, okay? Nice thin layer. You don't want too much of it because it will squeeze out between the grout lines if you plan on grouting, which I did grout this tile, okay? The tile has a six year warranty on it. And yes, you can put peel and stick tile over existing ceramic tile, okay? That's it. That's the point of this tile. It's supposed to be something easy that most homeowners or renters can do without damaging or whatever. Um, I don't know much about doing this to someone's rented apartment, but I suggest doing floating floors, which you don't glue anything down. Floating floors are literally what they sound like, floating floors. So you can easily take them up when you move and take them with you and use them again somewhere else, okay? Um, for this project, you're going to need a box cutter, a ruler of some kind. I used a level because I couldn't find my ruler, and um, a pencil. Okay, you're also going to need maybe like little clippers if you have to cut around little, you know, molding and trim and things like that. Okay, so just take your time and do this. Um, there were times where I just get very frustrated installing this tile. And it's not because the tile was hard to, in, to install. It was just me uh, making mistakes as far as measurements. When, you know, you see, when you rush things, they don't turn out right. 
So sometimes you just have to take a break, walk away and come back after having a snack. Okay. <laughs> and baby wanted a snack. So I put on a thin layer of the stick and stay adhesive and then I put on my tile. Absolutely love the tile. It's been about a week now um, since I've done this and the kids love it. I love it. Super easy to clean and it keeps the bathroom nice and bright without it looking super dark. And even when it was dirty, you couldn't tell that it was dirty, but I could tell it was dirty. Um, just saying, just saying. Okay. I know some people like to have things that you know, if they are dirty, you can't tell. Um, I'm not one of those people really like that. You know, I, I like lighter colored things in my house. I'm not really into the dark, dark furniture and dark this and dark that. It's, it's just not my um, taste. But if you like darker colored furniture, you can definitely, not furniture, darker colored, you know, home decor and makeovers and paint and things like that. You can definitely do everything to your liking. I'm not forcing you to do anything the way I do it, okay? All right. So I'm getting into a very tight corner right here. And as you guys can see, I have gloves on. Please wear gloves when using the stick and stay, okay? And please, if you're cutting tile, peel and stick tile, or um, floating floors, please don't cut it on top of tile or flooring that you already installed. Because if you miss, the box cutter is going to put a little cut into the tile that you already installed. And I say this because it happened to me, so I had to redo some tile that I had saw had a little cut on it. Okay, all right. Maybe if, if you're not picky, hey, it won't bother you, but me, I, I'm i gonna see it and it's gonna bother me and I'm gonna think about it and I just changed it so I didn't have to do all of that, okay? And make sure you press down very, very hard onto the tile okay if you have a weight a heavy weight or something that you can rub over the tile that will be great to help make the tile you know stick onto the stick and stay and the existing floor but I just used my body weight like I was all over the floor I weigh like 195 pounds I'm pretty sure it's on there all right and again I did put um, spacers between the tile because I did grout this tile so here is the first piece that I cut for the toilet base, but it, um, what happened? I forgot what happened. Oh, it broke. So I had to do a whole new piece, okay? And this part broke as well, but I kind of put it together in the back of the toilet so you can't really tell where it broke. So it's just back there. The front is perfect, and that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, here I'm using a smaller um, spatula. <laughs> a spatula that I got from Wally World. It comes in a, I believe this one came in a set of three, I think, or maybe that I just buy three. And I'm using a pre mix grout that I got from Home Depot. It does not have to be sealed. All of that is already in the product. I absolutely love this product because I used it on my kitchen backsplash, and so far it's been about almost two and a half years since I did my kitchen backsplash, and I have no complaints, no issues, no nothing. All right. You do not want to spread this grout all over the tile. Just try to keep it close to the grout line, spread it in a 45 degree angle and have your bucket of clean water and sponge ready to wipe it off. You don't want this to dry on, you know, on there for an hour. You're going to, it's going to take you forever to clean this off. I promise you. So do small sections at a time and clean as you go. So I did that small section, and as you guys could see, I'm just wiping off the excess in a 45 degree angle. You can also use a circular motion, but please don't apply too much pressure. Make sure you squeeze out a lot of water out of your sponge, because if you don't, all you're gonna do is wet the grout, make it super runny, and then when you clean it off, it's just gonna take the grout out of the um, grout lines. Okay, so take your time, small sections at a time, small sections at a time. You know, it's tempting to just do the whole bathroom and then to come back with the sponge. But if it dries, which it will, um, it's going to be very hard to clean this off. So do small sections again at a time. All right. And I did cut the tile to fit around the door frame. You can see that's the old brown door frame color. I am going to prime that and paint that and paint inside the closet. I haven't done that yet because 
this flooring tub took a lot of energy out of me. Um, I don't have as much energy as I usually do. I'm not as mobile, I guess, or flexible as I usually am. I catch a lot of pains with this belly, you know. So, you know, when I start feeling any type of way, I do slow down and I take a break, you know, and get myself together before I start doing anything else. I'm not going to push myself to a limit where I can, um, you know, hurt myself. All right, you guys. So we're nearing the, well, not end, because you get to see the before and afters in the end of the video. But here I'm just using... Um, Tub and, tub and shower kitchen caulk around the toilet. Make sure that's what you're using to caulk around your toilet and caulk anything in your bathroom, okay? And I'm putting up some um, hardware and fixtures here. This is a towel holder, a hand towel holder. Make sure you follow the steps to actually install these things. Don't try to rush it and just put the screws in the wall. You know, make sure you do it right so this way it doesn't fall off, okay, you guys? I promise you, if you do it right the first time, you're not going to have to do it again a second time. All right, so this is a quick before and after. There's a bunch of pictures that, you know, I kind of want you guys to see. I'm not completely done. I still want to get a new door for this bathroom. I have to get um, a new door handle for the linen closet. I still have to work on the bathroom um, countertop. I'm debating if I'm going to replace the sink. I have to put in a new vanity light fixture, which I already ordered, um, but it has international wires. So I'm working on figuring out exactly how to do that. And um, yeah, there's just a couple of things that I have to do still, but I think it's a big difference than how it was before. The kids absolutely love, love, love their bathroom. They enjoy taking showers now. So that's nice. That's nice for me and my nose. <laughs> All right, so if you guys are wondering again, the color of gray that I used on the walls is called Agreeable Gray. The peel and stick marble tile is from Home Depot. The stick and stay glue adhesive for the tile I got from Lowe's, I believe. Um, the gray on the cabinet is called Ocean Storm. The kit I use for the tub surround, um, tub shower surround is, is from Rust-Oleum. Okay, and make sure you get yourself a mask. Make sure you get yourself a measuring um, tool, like a ruler, pencil, box cutter, and, you know, just really, really clean your tub before you even try this. Make sure it's completely dust free. I'll see you guys very soon in other videos that are related to this one. Love you guys. Bye.